Hi everyone. So in this video, we'll discuss a theorem uh, that represents one of uh, like a major reason for uh, the motivation and justification of uh, of the deep learning approach or the deep neural network approach. Uh, and that theorem came out in the late 80s. It's called the universal approximation theorem. So we'll not provide any proof. We'll just read the theorem in this video and uh, we'll discuss its implications. So what it says is the following. So a feed forward network with a linear output layer, just to give you a background, linear output layer is like the sigmoid and softmax we had for classification problems. Linear output, output layer is what is paired with the mean square error cost function. So it's linear, it doesn't have uh, exponential because we needed an exponential in sigmoid and softmax because the cross entropy has a logarithm. Uh, in it and it comes from the maximum likelihood principle but here in regression problems we want to estimate a continuous variable right but we are still doing gradient based learning so we still want the good things about linear behavior which is the non-saturation uh, uh, the non-saturation of the gradient magnitude and the consistency of its direction so here this is for uh, a regression setting so a feed forward network with a linear output layer and at least one hidden layer with an activation function and that activation function has the following property it saturates for large positive and negative values so this is a little counterintuitive right because we said saturation is not a good thing well saturation is not a good thing for gradient based learning this is one specific way of optimizing neural networks right but this theorem is not about how to optimize the neural network it's about how that what the neural network can do regardless of how you can reach this objective so it's a computational ability right so a linear a feed forward network with a linear output layer and one at least one hidden layer with an activation function with this property it saturates for large positive and negative values can approximate with enough hidden units, right, we'll discuss that later, any Borel measurable function, and we'll come back, don't let that intimidate you in any way, we'll come back later to it, from one finite dimensional space to another with any uh, given non-zero uh, error upper bound. So what that means is the following. You give me any function, right, and you give me any uh, error upper bound. So you tell me I want to approximate this function with uh, an upper bound of 10%, 5%, 1%, any value, right? And that function is hopefully w from one finite dimensional space, the domain of the function, to another, which is the range of the function. So these are uh, things that are very typical to find in, in practice, right? Then I can find you a neural network, and that neural network has a linear output layer, right? and used for regression and at least one hidden layer and the activation with an activation function that saturates that satisfies the property of saturation and i'll have enough hidden units there is no limit on the number of hidden units that i can have in fact in most versions of that theorem we need an exponential number of hidden units and i'll approximate that function now that function has to be borel measurable that's a technical detail so all I can say here is that any most functions you will deal with in practice are Borel measurable. This is a measure theory uh, technicality. And what suffices for you to know is that any continuous function on a, on a closed and bounded set in Rn in the range of uh, multidimensional real values that we deal with is Borel measurable. Now, the second thing that's an obstacle towards understanding whether that affects us is that most activation functions we'll deal with do not saturate for large positive and negative values. And it turns out that this is a technicality of the proof of that theorem, and it actually can be extended to ReLU, and the version of it uh, with an extension to ReLU activation function has been proved. Now let's discuss the third aspect in red here, with enough hidden units. Let's see why that could be a big obstacle. Let's say I have my input layer has two variables, right? So n equal two. So I have every hidden unit. Let's say I have a fully connected layer. Every hidden unit is a function of these two variables, 
right? So let's say these these uh, variables are binary variables, right? So if either you have zero 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 one one zero one one, right? So the uh, the tr truth table for every function has four rows, right? So how many of these functions? So there are two to the n values to every function, right? Now. So these are the possibilities for every possibility of the input. How, what's the value of the output? How many of these functions are there? Basically, the truth table with four values, right? So, so if you have an, an output of length two to the n, then there can be two to that value, right? Possible outputs, right? So maybe you have a function that's all zeros. Another function that's zero 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 one, another function that's zero zero one zero, and so on, right? So the number of hidden units can be up to two to the two to the n, double exponential. So that's an important thing, right? So although the universal approximation theorem was very motivating about the potential of neural networks, even without any depth, right? So here we need only one hidden layer. But it doesn't tell us a lot about the computational, uh, a lot that we need to carry out this insight in practice about the computational complexity or the computational time needed. Because if we have a hidden layer with two to the two to the n, that's a lot of units and it will require a lot of computation, right? So next, in the next video, we'll discuss how depth can really ease that limitation and reduce the number of, uh, uh, the number of parameters needed uh, by a lot, right? So here, if I have two to the two to the n hidden units and uh, an input layer with two units, then then the number of parameters would be twice this value, right? Imagine if instead of only two units, you have 10 units or 100 units in the input layer. Imagine if they are not binary, but ternary, or the alphabet has a larger size and so on, right? So uh, next time we'll discuss uh, how depth can relieve that uh, computational complexity constraint. Thank you.